I think franchises are incredible. It's the same game every year. These franchises have so much more pressure. I don't think they could ever get away with that again. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I, I rage quit that game. So this is something that I have to play. Rockstar, call me, I've got the idea for you, yeah? What? Hello and welcome back to GTV. I'm JN Lopez and we're gonna discuss franchises in games. And with me, I have three special guests today to discuss this topic. First, we have Cyborg Angel, Twitch gamer, presenter, and voice actor. Mr. Midas, video game presenter, producer, and content creator. In the house. Hey. And Mr. Dalek JD, gaming YouTuber and GTV teammate, my family. Welcome to the show. Good to be here. Thank you for coming and discussing this topic with me. So first things first, give me your favorite franchise. Oh, favorite franchise. I'm going to give you a new one and an old one. Okay. Uh, Far Cry. Okay. And Parasite Eve. What Ooh, is that? Wow. Sorry. Parasite Eve. It's a very old game from PlayStation 1. Okay. Um, horror. Sick. I did not play any horror. Oh, would you class it as a horror? One. Yeah. yeah Parasite it, well, it, Eve actually, is a it scared the crap out of me when I was younger. So actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Midas, your franchise of choice, which well, I you already know, know. You already from know. The t -shirt. I am the franchise king. I love me a franchise. <laughs> and I love Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is oh, such right. a special yeah. franchise to me. Final Fantasy VII being my favorite in the game. So Final Fantasy. And I have to give a huge shout out to Legend of Zelda as well. Okay, JD, about yours? I'm going to do a cyborg and also do an old franchise okay. and a new one. But this one, I don't know if you call it a franchise because it's. It isn't, isn't, but Super Mario, just like all right. the Super Mario games, yeah, like yeah, yeah. from like the Nintendo 64, all those sort of games. They're like one of the first games that I played growing up. Okay. And like even now, like nearly 30 years old, I will still act like a five year old when they announce like a new Super Mario, <laughs> uh, like E3 or something. But for, for new current uh, franchise, it'd be Call of Duty. But okay. my entire online existence is based on Call of Duty. So okay. I'd have to say Call of Duty. So for you're that. saying Call of Duty, but you do have taste. Outside of course, of Call yeah, of, of course. I play other games outside awesome. of COD. But, Some people, but don't. people don't think don't yeah. people don't think I do, but okay. I do. Okay, cool. I've honestly never heard someone say Mario and Call of Duty are their two favourites. That's incredible. It's a very big difference. It means you're a fully yeah. developed that gamer. Is, yeah, I'm yeah. a special type of person, I guess. <laughs> so, you know, JD touched on something like what qualifies as a gaming franchise? Because would you call Mario a franchise? I would. would. I would. Yeah. yeah, I would. Yeah, and there's loads of them, and it's all, it's all exactly the same sort of characters and story, essentially, if it's story. But yeah, characters, right? Yeah, I think so, that's important as well, yeah, yeah. Just if they have the same characters. Yeah. I mean, with Mario, like, the story is exactly the same in every single game. It's like Princess Peach gets kidnapped, you've got to go save <laughs> yeah, her. we're tired of that, but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he transcends, you know, he's transcended, like, he's gone from just a Mushroom Kingdom, like, you know, Super Mario Galaxy, he's gone across universe. Mm, yeah, he's travelled a lot. He's been to the Olympics as well, you know. Yeah, he's done a lot. <laughs> he's, he's literally transversed, like, all the video game, like, History, if you think he's, you know, he's Sonic and Mario, like, who would have thought that? Yeah, like, very 10 true. years ago. You Fam, know? He's driving cars, he's playing tennis, he can do <laughs> he's, he's, he's a one man show, literally, <laughs> literally. he does it all. 100%. Well, yeah, Mario's 100% a franchise. Yeah, 100% yeah. a franchise. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to think about what my franchise of choice would be. So, one of the ones I definitely love is Mirror's Edge. Oh, and I I'm, love that so much. Yo. A man of taste. Oh my <laughs> God. A man of taste, 100%. Like, I really enjoyed it because it was different. I love the parkour elements. Yeah. I love the fact that you don't actually have to pick up a gun to win yeah, in that you, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and the fact that also representation in terms of an, a woman of East Asian background, it was one of the first times I saw a franchise have someone that was like a non-white woman mm. or man as a, a gaming franchise. And it was just inspirational That's to me. That's one that I need to play. And everyone has said it, I've not played it. So this is something that I have to play because I've heard this it's far just so too it's much. So good. Yeah. And I don't know what I was consumed by at the time game wise, but I completely like missed and look, out on that. you can't even that. mention it. That's like, you know, not a really great franchise. You can't mention what you was consumed by. No, no <laughs> exactly, yeah, no, I can't. I can't remember what it was at the time. No, no. So. I can't. Are franchises good? Or do you think there's room for improvement? Like, what do you? What's your thoughts on franchises at the moment? Um, I think they they are good. They're a good thing to have because you don't want like a brand new story and brand new characters every single time. You want to see characters develop okay. and have more to come out in other games from that. Um, however, I think that um, sometimes 
they are prolonged a bit too much and it's just the story's dragged Don't out and that franchise could have stopped and it was good when it should have stopped there but it didn't stop there mm. if that makes sense that's the only thing but I, I can't really pick out one like that I can Furious. think of at the moment <laughs> oh yeah no that is one yeah 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 <laughs> I think franchises are incredible because like what you're saying about Mario is that journey mm -hmm. like um Final Fantasy 7 remake when I listen to the music in that, the feelings that I get is I remember from when I was playing it mm. on the original PlayStation, like it taking me on a journey. And when I play a new game, I'll enjoy it and it looks amazing and yeah. gasses me, but it doesn't take me on that journey. Like I don't remember the feeling from the first time I played the first one. And even something like Far Cry. So Far right. Cry is a really interesting one where... If you look at how the franchise changed, like when Far Cry 1 and 2 came out, mm, it was yeah. all about um, pro tag and cool pro tag. Mm -hmm. And then Far Cry 3 came and it was all about the antagonist and you've seen how that's grown. Mm. So yeah, I think franchises are super cool. And, hmm. and I also love about franchises is they can do better on the next. But this is my question. Cause you mentioned Far Cry. <laughs> I was like, Far Cry's changed over time. Yeah. But not all franchises change over time. So is that what makes a franchise good is that they can add development or would you prefer franchises stay the same? So not to call you out, JD, you play, <laughs> you play Call of Duty. <laughs> call of Duty, does it change enough between game, between I, game um, I would say it does. Iterations? Cause like people would compare like Call of Duty with like FIFA. Right. And it's like Call of Duty is drastically different every year. Like okay. it's a, a different setting. It would be a different time period. Whilst FIFA, it literally looks like the same game. And I feel really sorry for anyone watching that plays FIFA like every single day because I used to be gripped by FIFA. Like I loved it. But then I was like, hang on a minute. Yeah. It's the same game every year. It's like the epitome of the grind. You know when you grind in games? Yeah. But it's like as a consumer, you're grinding and buying the same thing over and over again. And my thing is like, to what end? So what experience are you getting that's new out of some of these franchises that you can't get from something that is maybe you know, novel, a new IP kind of thing. So I completely agree with you with FIFA. Call of Duty, I'm not going to lie. Every time I think of Call of Duty, I think of World War II. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't, I don't know either. <laughs> Either World War II or set in Middle East somewhere, which is why I stopped playing the games. So, you know, sometimes I feel like franchises get stuck in a rut and they don't understand that the branding of this rut is now deterring certain consumers from playing their games as well. So I think, it's, I think franchises are interested in that way. I would say, what would you say is the best the most successful franchise? I've got to say, it's got to be Final Fantasy as one of them. Nah, it's Personally. easy. GTA. Come on. GTA is the most successful yeah. franchise oh, okay. ever. Okay. Okay. In sales, they basically become an MMO. Like, yeah. nothing yeah. beats yeah. GTA as a franchise. Yeah. Like, nothing can talk yeah. to it. So much that GTA 5 started on a PS3. Fam, why are we still playing it on a PS5? Oh, it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. But we are waiting for the next one. PS7? Mm, PS6, <laughs> maybe. It'll be on PS6, guaranteed. Because GTA 6, they still won't have that game out in yeah. like three, four years. Oh, God. So for the meantime, they'll be like, oh, pre-order GTA 6 and you'll get GTA 5 on PS6. But see, mm. that that works for the negative on a franchise. Yeah, because yeah. Now you've just created, yeah, go on. That works for the negative on a franchise where this franchise is doing so well that they're like, mm, we don't really need to make anything else in this franchise for now. Cool. Like, well, yeah, no, because it evolves in so many different ways. They've made the base story, and then all of a sudden, like you said, it's an MMO. It's got this, it's got all yeah. this online mm. stuff, and like, so it's evolving itself. So actually, yeah, that is probably one of the most successful. When GTA 6 is going to come out, come out on PS6, Six. and um, come out with the GTA 5 with it, do you think when it comes to franchises that companies can be, quote unquote, lazy? Um, in terms of like making extra money out of their existing franchise, even though they know that their consumers are waiting for something new. I'd say, yeah. There's Definitely. like many examples, like, like obviously GTA 5 was amazing. Mm. Rockstar are like the best, one of the, known as one of the best developers in the game. But then you look at their remaster trilogy of San Andreas, 3 and Vice City, which were pan. Yeah. So in a way, it's like from just that one thing that they did, suddenly people are kind of, kind of a little bit hesitant. So it's like, if GTA 5 was to come out again on PS6, I think if they bundled it as a pre-order bonus, that would be probably the only way people would would be happy about getting it. Because people aren't happy about buying it again on PS5. Because no. they've already yeah. bought the game twice. You know, they might have bought it on PC, they bought it on PS4. I had it on PS4 now, and on PS5. Yeah, same. Yeah. And PC. I have yeah, it on pretty right. much oh every platform. And I'm like, I can't be buying this game again. <laughs> you yeah. know? And you to know? be honest, I only hear about GTA when it comes to RP. 
yeah. I don't hear oh about gosh, any other. Yeah. Let's not. Yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I don't hear about it in any other way. So I think maybe the audience, the um, board. What were you saying, Midas? Do you know how stressed I am? Thinking um, GTA 6 coming out on a PS6. <laughs> this time we just got the PS5. You know? How long did the PS4 last? Oh, it looks so seven long. years. Seven don't, years. Don't, Literally. Uh-huh. So, yeah, just, you know, be prepared for your pension at the same time, I guess. <laughs> and that's saying something here. <laughs> um, so, um, so, in terms of su- most successful franchise, we've got GTA. You said Final Fantasy. Mm. I'll say Legend of Zelda. Yeah, because it's like I feel like with Legend of Zelda, Nintendo put it in a position where they launch a console with it. Yeah, and it's like it's just if you want the console, you're getting Zelda. Like there's no two ways yeah. about it. Yeah, it's true. And also, I f- would argue they take a lot of time to develop Zelda compared to like many of their other games. They do not rush Zelda. Like they mm. make sure that game is perfect. Mm. And then when it comes out, it is always like critique is one of the best games ever made. Like Breath you look at Breath of the Wild, yeah, yeah, it's like one of the best games ever made and they're making a second one. What are people actually buying? Because yeah. for me, if you're buying FIFA, mm, sorry, it's gonna offend, might offend people. <laughs> if you're buying FIFA over and over again and it's the same game over and over again, and then you've got a new novel experience, that's still franchise in Zelda, what is it that consumers actually want? Do you want new experiences or do you just want the same thing with a different year on the front? Like, I'm, I'm I think a part of it is, like, just what's new and what's out. And I think some of the younger audience are just like, well, I need the latest new version of that. So if it gets the hype, Got it. then it gets successful sometimes. And that's the unfortunate thing. You can have a really good game and a really good franchise. Mm. But if it hasn't got that hype backing it, it does just, just doesn't sell as well, does it? That brings me on to yeah. the next point, which is, like, it's kind of in this current day and age is kind of like franchise versus indie mm-hmm. in terms of the new experiences, the new stories, the new types of characters that are coming out of indie that ultimately for their scale and scope, they do really well, but they sometimes cannot match up to like the AAA franchises and stuff. Do you have any indie games that you feel like should be made into a franchise that you've played recently or any games that you would like to see um, that might not be indie, but might not be as big as the other AAA titles? Uh, so one for me, which yeah. is a pretty new game that I think definitely needs to be a franchise, is um, Kina. Um, Br- yes. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bridge of... Yeah. Yeah. Bridge of yeah. Yeah. I yeah. loved that and, game. And the reason why I feel like it needs to be a franchise is like visually it was beautiful, like stunning, stunning. stunning. But some of the gameplay features felt pretty old. Yeah. And I felt like there's stuff that if they like, it's their first, this is their first game. Yeah. Because they come from advertising and stuff like yeah. that. And for them to be able to go back in the box, get a bigger budget and yeah. really put all of those nuances in, yeah. their next game could be incredible and something yeah. that just blows your mind. Yeah, 100%. That's a really good thought. I, I'm so looking forward to them doing that. Yeah. No, I really hope it, they it do. really was because it had that. Yeah. Um, it was like it a was, movie. Yeah. yeah. It was like a Pixar it was like movie. A chill, yeah. Pixar movie yeah. with Dark Souls elements yeah. in terms of like fighting the bosses. When I first played the first boss, I was like, oh, this is great. Then I went, oh my. God, yeah. like, what the hell is this? It's, How is a child supposed to play this game? This game's hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's so difficult. But yeah, definitely. Actually, really good suggestion. Anyone else got a suggestion? I've got one, but I, I feel like it's become a franchise now. And it's a really good example of the topic we're talking about. Yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. That started off as an You're indie so game, right? right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, because I'm pretty sure it's just the brains behind one, it's one guy yeah. called Scott. And he turned that game into three games, and then recently it was a, there was a console release. I'm trying to remember what it was called, but it was it was big scale, mm-hmm. like it was a big deal. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they showed it at State of Play, innit? Yeah, that's yes. it. Yeah, 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 State of Play. That's right. And yeah, massive game. And mm. I would argue as well, because that's a PlayStation game. That's like what have Xbox got? And Cuphead is like a super right. It's just mm-hmm. such a unique game yeah. that they could franchise. But so far they've had Cuphead, and then they spent four years making one DLC. But the DLC is apparently like one of the like some of the best like gameplay people have experienced in forever. Really? Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I, I rage quit that game. So oh, same, same, yeah. I haven't <laughs> finished that game. I really <laughs> want to. Though. Is <laughs> yeah, like, I watch I watch videos and I'm like, oh my god, this game looks so good. But, like TV and media and CS cinema, they kind of go for the major franchises to adapt into TV and film because they've got a proven base. And I feel like sometimes that's just not allowing some more unique stories and experiences like Cuphead to come through to to the rest of the consumer market when it comes to like adaptation. So it's it's interesting that Cuphead is doing that. I'm wondering how successful it will be. I tell you who's done that really well though, League of Legends. 
So League, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, League's got a really cool. Um, obviously, the game is popular, but Arcane's cool, and I don't play League. Like yeah. leagues, that, like I've always known Has about. Has it made it. you want to play? But it now, though? yeah, because I've yeah. got the law and I've <laughs> understand the characters. Watching yeah. that, I've been like, well, man, might pick up a little league still, you know. Let me know when you do that <laughs> because I know your type of game. I don't know if you that's your type of game at all. I think you might like it. I don't know. I'm gonna give it a little chat. It's something you're not trying to do. It takes a while to get into. Do you play mobile? A lot. Nah. What's the why are you playing? Because the Netflix thing was so sick. I want to try out the he game might now. Love I love MOBAs. Find you never know. If he's never played it, he's true, like, I, true. I love MOBAs. I used do to play them all the, yeah, all the time. That was my, my thing. Okay. Back in the day. But I've, I've just thought, thought of something as well. I don't know if you guys have heard of this one, but The Room is a really I've small, heard of The Room, yeah. The movie? Sorry. Uh, no, oh. so the room, it's like a its <laughs> like a puzzle game, but it's not a puzzle game. There's more to it, and it's like really amazing graphics, but also horror elements as well. And this is an escape box. You have to get into a box. And I know that sounds so simple, but this box has so many different layers and like Kidnapping the hidden game. sort of things inside <laughs> of it. Yeah, and it all animates. It's this is the reason incredible. why it's not a franchise. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that explanation like, yeah, confused like, everyone. Hello? That's the reason why they made it a franchise. You have to be just honest. Google the trailer. It's so <laughs> if you good. were to describe Mario as a, as, as a franchise, that description is wild. Yeah. An Italian yeah. plumber yeah. and his brother go and mm, what, rescue a princess who gets taken by an uh, angry death metal turtle to another world with floating mushrooms that are, I don't know, make and turtles. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Sounds like a normal day in my life. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, like, the franchises moving forward have to change to the current, like, social climate? Do you think they will? I think they should, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, but then going back a little bit to what we're talking about with um, franchises, like, you made a really good point about uh, franchises where say they release a bad game they go back to the drawing board and then they release a better one mm -hmm. um, you could look at like Star Wars Battlefront 2 yes. but yeah. the first game yeah. amazing everyone loved it right and they're like oh my god we're getting more Battlefront and it was it was awful mm -hmm. but they spent the next two years just working on updates releasing more content and by the end of it the game was amazing mm. and then they were like yeah we're not we're not working on this anymore because we're going to work on battlefield um you see when you have a franchise mm. one of my favorite games ever is the last of us yes 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 incredible game very well done. and it could have been one game and it could have ended there and Naughty Dog decided, no, we've got more of a story that we want mm. to say. And most people is like, I don't want this to be a franchise. I want this to be a one-off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then The Last of Us Part Two come out and they told a very controversial story. Yes. And them turning that into a franchise actually split their fan base. Because half did. of yes. their fan base... Well, yes. did it split the fan base or did their choice of having an LGBTQIA character also split their fan base? Well, I think... All of the decisions they made in that game, including that, including the big uh, mystery that happens to one right. of the main protagonists, I feel like everything that they, the story they wanted to tell, split that fan base. Cool. And you've got half of the people who hate that game now, who love the original, and then other people mm. like myself who was blown away yeah. and, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. never even that. knew. I could feel that kind of emotion yeah. for a yeah. game yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. in yeah. a video game. I didn't even know I could I could feel that way. But that's that's the time when a dev is like, I'm gonna make a franchise and really take a risk yeah. and tell a yeah. story. And they if they decide to do a three, there's gonna be so many people who are not even gonna wanna play it because they yeah. hated what they did well, in two. Can I just point they out? married it with really good execution. Sorry, again. No, 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 no. I was uh, gonna say what they did for um, Last of Us Two is that it took time. They took time, they developed it, and they married it yeah. with really, mm -hmm. really great execution. So it wasn't just, we're going to take this risk. We're going to take this risk well. Yeah. We're going to yes. develop it well. So even if, like, you don't like it, you can't deny the quality of this game. And to be fair, I don't know, you know, sometimes I feel like franchises' core audiences are a bit bigoted and they need to be left behind um, in general. So... Yeah, I'm I'm the worst person to kind of be like, <laughs> yeah. oh no, you know these poor core cool audiences. Nah, bun them, let them go. It's <laughs> yeah. done. Come move up with the times. But exactly. Sorry, you well, I was going to say like what you said about it splitting the audience, and they were like not happy with the fact that it was so many emotions and it wasn't what they thought it would be. Sometimes it needs to not be a Disney ending. Yeah, yeah. I agree. and that's why I think part of the fan base base was split across. They were split because. It was this. It wasn't a fairy tale ending, yeah. and they wanted this happy ending. Whereas it was raw emotion of this. It can go wrong, and it was just so much more real. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's what's Absolutely. needed.
Well, they so told their story, innit? Yeah. They yeah, told it, their it story, successful. and a lot of gamers, they we're so used to playing the characters and feeling like it's us. We're not. I'm not Cloud. I'm not no <laughs> blonde guy yeah. with a big bastard story. You get me? Yeah, from Blackie, from not. Ricky. But sometimes, <laughs> like we feel, we feel that story so much, and yeah. a lot of gamers felt like they were Joe, and they're not. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that, and they I mean, and, and people couldn't <laughs> understand what they, what happened and what like you know oh my god that's not meant to happen in the story because that doesn't make it happy anymore. Well, unfortunately, it's more raw and real, and that's what people need. And the best thing about franchising is that if that's what you want, go and play one again. Yeah, yeah, you exactly have that, that standalone game. If you want that experience, you want that story to be that. You have a full game that you can replay over and over again if you want to. But this is what number two is, and if you don't like it. And the thing is, quality-wise, you cannot fault that game. Yeah. So, like, for you to fault the story, it is, it is what it is. Like, the story is not going to be what you create unless you're the story writer. So, you know, I feel like a lot of also sometimes franchises do need to hold their ground when it comes to their creative decisions. Um, in terms of franchises, what we, I want to talk about quickly is representation in franchises. You know me, I'm going to talk about this all the time. And there was this whole meme that was going around the internet with the franchise character Bingo, White Man Bingo, because you had Joel, you had Nathan Drake, you had Geralt. There's a bunch of them anyway, but they're all like middle-aged, 40-year-old, 30-year-old white men who were brooding, who have, you know, haven't shaved in a couple of weeks. Um, and they either have a dead wife or a dead child that motivates them to fuel through the story. Do you feel like we need to have franchises that step away from, I don't know, Western stories or step away from these core white male protagonist characters? Because the only one that I can think of right now is Mirror's Edge. Yeah. Um, I really would love to see a Deathloop franchise, mm -hmm. but it depends on the ending that you got, spoilers. Um, <laughs> but I would really love to see different franchises from different places. And I guess that's where like Assassin's Creed and um, sometimes Far Cry comes in, in terms of the settings that it takes place and the kinds of antagonists and protagonists that come yeah. through. Like, what would you guys feel about that topic and that subject in general? So I really do think that they do need to step away from mm. um, the Western style stories. And there's actually a success in the way that it's been done in films already. And you've seen in some of the cartoon mm. films where they don't have that initial story and they don't have this prince that saves them or this male main character. It's revolving around something completely different. So there's success in it. And I think that they would get that in gaming too. Yeah, 100%. I, I agree, obviously. <laughs> what about you guys? I 100% agree with you. And what's annoying is I feel like they're doing one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. And then... You have games that do try, like Mafia 3, yeah. but I feel like Mafia 3 is the weakest Mafia game. Me personally, I feel like the game that had the black protag was the one that had the, the least work in the game. Like the world's empty. Like So I was like, the, the game I'm meant to play to be excited to play this black protag. Mm. And they did really good in his story. The rest of the world was just lackluster. And then I've got nothing to be excited about to tell other people. So mm. yeah, 100%. I agree as well. I'd say like a really good example of a big game that done it well was uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Yes, like mm. amazing. Yeah, game. like that. Like you don't even think about it. Like yeah. it's just done that well. And like now Miles is an essential part of Spider-Man story. And going into like Spider-Man Two, like he's going to be part of the game as well. Like it's no longer just focused solely on Peter Parker. Like mm. I think they need to definitely do a lot more things like that. Like I think that's a great way to approach it. Yeah, allowing that person of color or woman or woman of color or trans or non-binary in terms of just allowing them to be the focus of attention and be that center character to their own story. That's still what's missing, I feel like, because I would really love to have another Mirror's Edge example. And I'm playing Horizon Forbidden West right now. And again, it's just like, I see a lot more black and brown faces and Asian faces in the NPC community. And it now looks like, Aloy, you just look out of place. So, JD, out of everyone here on the table, your career is kind of focused around franchises, so obviously Call of Duty. So what happens when, for instance, one of the games doesn't perform so successfully? How does that affect you and your career? Because it's quite dependent on it. Yeah, you know? it's kind of stressful, not going to lie. Like, as soon as they reveal a game uh, and then leading up to the release, you know, they, they reveal all sorts of different parts of the, the game. You're sort of thinking in your head, like, what am I going to what am I going to create content on? But like what I do is I focus on the zombies mode on Call of Duty. And that's interesting because it's not every year. So say like 
um, the creators of Zombies as a dev developer called Treyarch, yes. who make like Black Ops. Yeah. So when it's not a Black Ops game, there's no zombies. And so it's like, oh, what am I going to do? So it, it's an interesting one because Vanguard uh, that came out the year just gone had Treyarch make zombies, but it wasn't a Treyarch game. It was made by a different team. Right. But Treyarch helped make that mode. Right. And it like on paper, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I have another whole year of zombies. But then it came out, the mode was awful. Like it was like a shell of what you'd expect Call of Duty zombies to be. Like it, it wasn't rounds or anything like that. It was like, uh, go here, do an objective. You complete that, which takes two minutes. Like, it'd be something like stand on a flag for like five seconds and it'd be oh, like okay. four flags around the map. Like, oh, okay, you're done. All right, good, the round goes up. And then you just keep doing the same thing. But it's like, they've been doing that for 10 years. Everyone's still, like people still love zombies. Mm. So it's like, if it's not broken, My face don't, don't change it. Yeah. Yeah, don't change the formula. So I think that's a real good sort of learning lesson for that development team to be like, you know, stick to what you know, innovate, but maybe just try and keep it to what the DNA of it originally was. Because mm -hmm. obviously it's really difficult trying to innovate, but then obviously not change too much at the same time. Yeah. It's a very hard balancing act. And mm. I, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't envy them. It's such a hard job. My final question to you all would be, if you could create a franchise with maybe a special character or what that game would do, what would that be? Something to do with virtual reality. Okay. So it would be a virtual reality game um, sort of the style of Half-Life Alex in the way that the mechanics really pushed yeah, yeah, VR yeah. to what it should be um, and create sort of, I would probably say some kind of saving the world sort of you're the, well, you would be the main character, but just, I don't know, a bit of sci-fi in it, a bit of mm. like craziness, a bit of like time travel, all of that jazz. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Ooh, yeah, that's okay, really yeah. interesting. I wasn't expecting you to say that. That's yeah. really cool. Okay. Minus. So I'm going to change, before I would have said some kind of Final Fantasy thing, oh, but God. Forspoken's already done that. So I'm going to say, Rockstar, call me. I've got the idea for you, yeah? What? So for like a GTA 6, but listen to me, we are going to the West Indies. So we're going to have, <laughs> we're going to Jamaica, Jeez. we're going to Trinidad and Tobago, we're going to Barbados, and you're going between the different islands and you're doing different missions. We're going Barbados, going fish fry, you get me? Like we're literally flying between the islands, doing different missions. We're going to be in yard, you get me? It's going to be a, a real thing. So you're going to take them rock down plane from yeah. Jamaica yeah. to Barbados? No, 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 we'll just get a boat, innit? Next, move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. I think GTA should be definitely set in different places as well. JD, sorry, come on. Um, this can be a very different one, but it's okay. from like what I enjoyed a lot when I was like in my teenage years. Like rhythm music games were yeah. like such a big thing. Mm. And it seemed like every year they were just bringing out more and more. And I think that's why they died. Because there was just so Saturation, many of them. Yeah. Saturation. You had Guitar Hero, you had Rock Band, and then Rocksmith sort of like reinvented the wheel by like actually using a real guitar. Oh, did they? Yeah. I didn't even hear but about I'd that. But I'd say one. they need to just create a brand new franchise where they use real instruments, but it's like guitar, drums, piano, just like because that those games helped me learn how to play musical instruments. Okay. And it'd be amazing for like a new generation to learn how to play like a vast array of instruments. But it's a game. My one would be flipping this whole um, going to ancient civilizations into the temples on its head. So for instance, Uncharted or Tomb Raider, flipping that in terms of having a main character who is black or brown and mm -hmm. they're going to reclaim artifacts to return them back to the people. I've I like already that. written it down. It's already copy written, so no one can take <laughs> it from me. Um, but yeah, then they'll be flying back to their native home. And then the franchise could be different people from different backgrounds going to different places. That's so good. That's, I, that's what I, like I want to play. Reverse colonization. Well, that, that, that would teach you so much history as well. Exactly. Actual history. Like, I would love that. that yes. would be, that's, they need to do that. They need to do that. <laughs> so we're basically just going to the British Museum. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, British Museum. No, because you know taking what? Taking everything back. Black Panther, the first scene when he goes to the British History Museum, I've been there, right? And personally, my mum is very much like, they teethed everything in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> think like going to that museum is such a interesting and um, push and pull experience when you are someone whose ancestry comes from one of those places. So that was also one of the things that kind of spurred me 
to like think mm. about it because it would be like an online heist where you could go <laughs> to the real museum and see everything back. Well, yeah. we've got good four solid games here. Let's get our money. Okay, I get the pictures yeah. ready. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been such a great conversation. Yeah, thanks for having thanks us. For having no us. problem. Thank you so much. That's been it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching GTV. And I'll see you on the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah.